Today we will cover using a containerized version of the Apache HTTP server. We'll start by making the server display a simple static HTML website. Once that is working, we'll move on to making it serve a dynamic PHP-driven website. To begin, let's serve a static HTML website locally. In this directory, I have an index.html file. Most web servers will look for a file called index.html to serve a website. If we open the HTML file, we can see that it's a basic HTML template with a p tag containing hello world. I'm going to use PHP's built-in web server to host the site so we can see what it looks like in a browser. I'm going to connect it to localhost port 8000 and set the target to the current directory. And if we go to this page, we should see our hello world site. Now I want to serve the same site, but using an Apache Docker container. Let's get started. To begin, let's download the latest image of Apache from Docker Hub. One thing to note is that the image is called HTTPD and not Apache. When Apache is running under Unix, the process name is HTTPD, which is short for HTTP daemon. Since we want the latest version, we can simply run docker pull HTTPD. And Docker will automatically add the latest tag to the command. Let's check the documentation for how we should write our docker run command. We want to run this without a docker file first. We will get into creating our first docker file in a later video. Let's walk through the docker run command. So we have docker run dash dit. The d stands for run as daemon. I is for interactive and t is for pseudo tty. The name flag allows us to give the container a name. And our port flag allows us to connect our host port 8080 to port 80 inside of the container. The V flag allows us to mount our present working directory to this directory, user local Apache 2 htdocs. This is the directory that Apache will monitor for files to host as websites. And finally, we supply the image name and a tag. So this is what our docker run command will look like. We're going to say docker run dash dit dash dash name and I'm just going to name it Apache and then I'm going to connect my local port 8080 to port 80 inside of the container and then mount my present working directory to user local Apache 2 htdocs and then give it the image name. An interesting thing to note with this command compared to when we ran a containerized version of PHP is that we're not passing through a command we simply want the service to run. This is a long running service, whereas the PHP command was a short lived one off container. Now, once we run this, we should have Apache running as a daemon in a container. And there it is. Now let's check to see if it works. Localhost port 8080, and there's our hello world. Now we have Apache running in hosting files in our present working directory. Since we mounted the directory, the container should be able to read any changes we make to the file. Let's change the p tag to read day to day docker and see if the site updates. And if we refresh, we can see the updates. So what will happen if we try to add some PHP? Let's try it out. First, we'll need to make this index.html file an index.php file. So we're going to rename it. And now let's add a little bit of PHP. We're just going to echo out hello. And if we refresh, we get this index page. And the reason we get this index page is because we haven't told Apache to look for an index.php file and render it. But even if we did render it directly, we don't see the hello string echoed out to the page because PHP is not installed on this Apache container. So how can we get Apache and PHP to play nicely inside of a container? Well, we have a few options. First, we could install PHP inside of a container running Apache. We could also install Apache inside of a PHP container. Or we could use a pre-built solution that is offered by the PHP Docker Hub repository, an image that has PHP and Apache ready to go. Let's find that image.
Let's look through the PHP Docker official images. And right here is the Apache tag. So we should be able to just docker pull php colon apache and pull this image down. Let's go ahead and run that. Once again, let's check the documentation to see if there's anything that can help us with our docker run command. And here is apache without a docker file. So this docker run command runs as a daemon, connects our local port 80 to port 80 inside of the container, gives the container a name, mounts the present working directory to var www.html. This is slightly different than the Apache configuration we saw in the Apache image. And this is because of the document root that it's set in this image itself. We'll just keep it to var www.html and know that that's the directory that Apache will look for to serve websites. And then finally, we give it the PHP Apache tag. Let's try this out. We should still have our HTTPD container running, and we do, so let's go ahead and stop it. And remove it. Now let's copy this command from the documentation and make a few modifications. First, we're going to use the PHP Apache tag, and we're going to make our local port 8080 connect to port 80 inside of the container. Let's try this out. Now if we go back to our site, localhost port 8080, and there is the echoed out hello. Now if we make modifications to the index.php file, and we go back and refresh, we should see those changes update. Now we have a containerized version of Apache running the latest version of PHP and it is serving websites from my present working directory. I can easily start and stop the container and remove it whenever I like. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to share this environment with other developers working on this website? We could essentially synchronize our local development environments. Well, it turns out we can do this. Aside from sharing the exact command that we run, there's a better way. In our next video, we will cover using a Docker file. Think of it as a configuration file for running Docker run commands. I think you'll like it. Cheers.